Hearth and pine, pine and hearth. This is our song. Now we're going to start. Hello, and welcome to the first episode of Hearth and Pine. I'm Tyrone Dayhawk Night Hammock. My name is Mac. And this is episode one of Hearth and Pine. Tonight, we're going to delve deep into the lives of your hosts, tell you all about who we are and where we're from. This will probably be the most boring episode, but introductions are always important. So, (laughs) if you care at all about the first episode and learning about who you're listening to, keep on going. If you don't care, move on to the next one. We're going to start off with some summaries of the both of our experiences and lives in the Northwoods of Wisconsin and Minnesota. Um, And Tyrone is going to start us off. Tyrone, take it away. So I'm going to fight it as much as I can to not use my Minnesota accent. It'll come out. I promise. I grew up in Minnesota. Believe it or not, though, I was actually born out here in the deserts of eastern Washington. And I'm back here again in the not deserts of western Washington. (laughs) Before I was old enough, though, my parents said, Hey, you want to go to Minnesota? And I said, I don't know how to talk yet. And they said, we're going to Minnesota. And that's what we did. Grew up in the land of cold and snow. Remember snowmobiling every winter. My mom, when I was a kid, actually bought me and my brother a couple old 60s, 1960s Elans that we bummed around in our yard. For those of you who are not from winter areas, one of the big companies is Skidoo or Skidoo, depending on if you want to pronounce it wrong. And their first actual snowmobile was called an Elan, E-L-A-N. And it was a small little engine that probably came out of a riding lawnmower with a track behind it. And it went maybe five miles an hour, but weighed 10,000 pounds. Um, Oh. (laughs) thing was built of pure steel, and the reason it was so slow is because it weighed so much. (laughs) So later... In life, that came in handy. As I grew up, I got my first job, and the only paper boy who delivered on a snowmobile. So I was pretty popular in the neighborhood. I ended up moving up into a place called the Boundary Waters, and lived up there for a good two years. When did you do that? That was during college. It was 2007 to 2009 you were up in the Boundary Waters? Yeah. Cool. Doing guide trips and uh, dog sledding, fishing... All that fun stuff. What is the Boundary Waters, for those that don't know? The Boundary Waters Canoe Area Wilderness is a huge, huge area in northern Minnesota and Canada that is reserved for outdoor exploration. Basically, you're not allowed any kind of motors or anything like that. It's all canoe or kayak in, hike in. And if you're familiar with Minnesota, we're the land of 10,000 lakes. And 90%, 90% of those lakes, oh, you're, you're trying to claim Wisconsin has more. So Depends on the size of the lake. To clear the air, if we're going by Wisconsin measurement, Minnesota has about 100,000 lakes. If we're going by Minnesota measurement, we have about 10,000. Either way, we have more. I know that people in Wisconsin hate to hear that. Yes. We like to claim everything, because we are a proud Germanic people. Yes, it's ours. <laughs> Maybe a little too Germanic, if you know what I mean. <laughs> but you guys have good cheese. There is that. <laughs> a little off. Just a little bit. That'll little happen bit. a lot. <laughs> so growing up there, had a lot of fun. No matter how much fun you're having, it's time to move on. And you... I had to stop having fun. Because I had to leave the Boundary Waters. And then I came out here. And, and you had more fun. started having more fun. So don't let anybody tell you you got to stop having fun. Oh my god. Because <laughs> you got to have fun all the time. So ignore what Tyrone said about you got to stop having fun at some point. Because it is clearly not true. You can always have fun if you know where to go for fun. Well, like, you don't necessarily have to know where you go. Like, I have aimlessly just bumble-fucked around. You went to one place. 
But it worked out. You went to, but you bumble fucked to one place. <laughs> Not all around. You can't claim that. I did that. Yeah, but I bumbled up to the boundary waters and then I bumbled out here. <laughs> you're just That's a little, true. you're a little bumblebee sleeping yeah. in the flowers along the way. <laughs> <laughs> the little dots as I traveled across the map. Oh, that's cute. So what did you do when you got into Washington? Ended up getting a job on a whale watch boat. I still work there, actually. I worked my way up from making some of the best food around. My chili cheese dogs are known worldwide. If you're listening in Germany and you remember Tyson's famous chili cheese dogs, you're welcome. I've had people come back from Germany and tell me <laughs> I was the best one they had. If you sailed with us in my early years, you might remember the Porkinator 5000. I don't know how to say that in other languages, but I'm sure that every single person who tried that from around the world has probably gone back to their country and told them about it. And I have worked up as a naturalist slash historian slash super amazing funny person. And I am now working towards being a captain and driving the boat and telling terrible jokes. Was that big breath necessary? <laughs> no. <laughs> you can cut it out and post. Ah! Don't worry, folks. This is not edited at all. Straight through. All right, folks. So uh, Tyson doesn't like talking about himself very much, so I can help with this last little portion. Um, so for the last 10 years, he's been very career-oriented. He's gone through a lot of ups and downs, including being homeless, to almost owning his own property in a span of five years? Five years or so since 2014? Yeah. Just okay. about. He's experienced a lot. So since coming out here, living in a teeny little car and a tent. I.e. being homeless. Yeah, pretty much homeless. No, not pretty much. It was. Finding property, finding friends, getting to a point in life where I'm... Somewhat comfortable. I still have my hardships, and you know that'll come through throughout this podcast. I'll give you jokes and my take on things and advice from experiences of I've had. Obviously, like a lot of other podcasts, I'll give you professional medical advice that you shouldn't <laughs> listen to because I'm not a medical doctor. But my end goal in this is to have fun and hope that you as a listener enjoy. And maybe... This is your one little escape from the madness of the world. Especially if you don't have a partner in crime. P.I.C. like I do. <laughs> and if you don't have a partner in crime, well, that's what we're here for. Not actual crime. We're not going to commit crime. But we're here for you. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Matt. Mac, tell us about yourself. That's cute. <laughs> I grew up in the Northwoods of Wisconsin in a very small, unincorporated town. Uh, when people think of Wisconsin, they think of cows and farmland, but really that's just the lower half of the state. So if you if you look at a map of Wisconsin, it's uh, Wausau is a town directly in the center, or whereabouts. And so if you draw a horizontal line across Wisconsin, it's all farmland below that line, but north of that line, it's all woods. It's all woods. My little town of 500 really only saw an influx of people for snowmobiling season and fishing. And sometimes ATVing. Was there a lot of ice fishing too? For the most part, yeah. Okay. I mean, there's a lot of ice fishing tournaments. People like to really go after the world record sizes for sturgeon and walleye. I mean, you find a lot of those in Lake Superior, but you can find some monsters and the flowage and um, the left of Flambeau chain of lakes and places like that. I spent a lot of time in the woods because that was pretty much all I could do. If I wanted to go to get fast food, I had to travel 30 minutes to the next town over where there was a McDonald's and a Burger King. <laughs> if I wanted to go to the mall... That was a two-hour drive away, so we only got to go to Duluth or Wausau for, like, some other formal event where a mall was actually necessary. 
I started working when I was 13, and I've had almost two jobs ever since then. Uh, even in college, I think I only took off the first month and a half of my freshman year to try and have some fun with the with the people I was surrounded with. And I mean, we'll we'll get into a lot of these topics later on. But college was a difficult time. Uh, I struggled a lot with malnutrition and and not having enough to eat. It was difficult. Took me two years to save up for a computer, and then I got mugged. So that's a fun story for the future. But anyway, so once my college experience was over with, I decided to shoot for the moon and try something new. I moved to Montana with a partner and stayed there for three years. Got my first job in my career. Did a lot of exploring in the mountains. Did a little bit of dog training, weightlifting fitness training. So I got my cat and then I decided to move closer to friends and family that cared about me. And um, I ended up moving to Arcata, California to live with my aunt on her goat farm. That was amazing. I found myself, found my creativity. I was happy again, doing some manual labor jobs off the radar. I fell into a really amazing music scene in Arcata and McKinleyville, and I was surrounded by these fantastic jazz players, saxophone, trumpet, flugelhorn, piano, cello, bass, all of it. <laughs> it was really wonderful. And I got to be in the Redwoods. Like, that was my biggest draw. So California was amazing. I was still homeless a couple of times in California, but it was still amazing. When I when I originally left for Montana, I had a five year plan, and my my five year plan was to go from Montana to California with my aunt in the redwoods to Washington because I, I my end goal was to live up in Washington. And the year that I accomplished moving to Washington was the year that COVID started. So I moved to Washington in 2019, the beginning months. And not even a year later, <laughs> not even a year later, COVID hit. January 2020. So I may have accomplished my five-year goal and I'm in a pretty good spot here now, but my favorite part about moving to the PNW was the amount of opportunity to do things. You know, like if I wanted to join protests, I could. There's so many, like so many <laughs> If I wanted to join a homestead and live off the grid, I could do that up near Bellingham. Seattle was a friendly place for young and new professionals, so I knew that it would be a good place that I didn't need to have 10 years experience and a master's degree to get an entry-level job, you know? And if I didn't want to take part in city life, I've got the ocean on one side and an hour away is the mountains on the other, so... And then even beyond that, there's a fucking desert. Mm -hmm. There's just so much to do. Like, the opportunity in Washington State is abound. But if this has made any sense to you, I congratulate you for making it through both of us rambling. That's it for introductions. That's where we are. Hearth and Pine, this is the end. Love for you to come back and be our friend. This is Mac. And this is Tyrone. Thank you for listening to Hearth and Pine. We hope to see you next time. Bye. 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 Have a good time. Good night. Happy Saturday. Hasta luego. Stay warm. Keep your stick on the ice. Don't talk to strangers. <laughs>